साफार करमिक अनेकगुल इंद्रनील इंद्रनिलेशन ग प्रथम चेस्टाने এখানে একটা সিলেক্ট অপশন আসছে সেখানে সিলেক্ট এন্টার স্ক্রিন বলছে পিডিএফ ফাইলটা কি এখান থেকে পাওয়া যেতে পারে দাও ফাইল স্যার স্ক্রিন শেয়ার থেকে হতে পারে স্ক্রিন শেয়ার কোথায় আছে বলো বাটনটা আমি দাও স্ক্রিন শেয়ার ডান দিকে তিন দিকে স্যার তিন হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ নিয়েছি দাও স্যার ডান দিকে তিনটা অপশন আছে তো সিলেক্ট উইন্ডো অর স্ক্রিন বলছে উইন্ডো অর স্ক্রিন এন্টার স্ক্রিন বললাম আমি এন্টার স্ক্রিন বললে তোমার দেখা দেখাচ্ছে দাও দেখে দেখা যাক কি আছে করে কি দেখা যায় কি আসছে না এন্টার স্ক্রিন করলে ফুল স্ক্রিনটা নিয়ে ও ও আচ্ছা দাও 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 তাহলে টার্ন দাও ইউ আর প্রেজেন্টিং এটা তাহলে আমি কি করব স্টপ প্রেজেন্টিং তাই তো এটা এটা বন্ধ করব দাও কি হয় দেখা যাক 
আচ্ছা <laughs> দেখতে পাবো না কিন্তু থাকি কোথাও শুনতে না পাও আমাকে জানিও ঠিক আছে is uh, basically about uh, the relativistic electrodynamics in the last uh, course the mpc 23 you studied about uh, electrostatics magnetostatics and maxwell equation and its various applications and this uh, course is a bit ad advanced so na jacche na hello ha keu keu sunte pachho na mona na hello circumstances. যদিও শুনতে খুব দুটো টপিক মনে হচ্ছে বাট ইট ইট কভার্স এ লট অফ থিংস অ্যান্ড উই হ্যাভ টু গ্র্যাজুয়ালি বিল্ড আপ ফ্রম দ্য বেসিক্স তো যেহেতু তোমাদের আগের সেমিস্টারে বলেছো যে কিছুটা পোর্শন হয়েছে কিছুটা পোর্শন হয়নি তাই আমি প্রথম কয়েকটা ক্লাস বেসিকলি রিক্যাপিচুলেশনের উপর জোর দেবো যেখানে বেসিকগুলো আমরা একটু একটু ঝালিয়ে নেব যেগুলো যেগুলো তোমরা আগে জানো অলরেডি সেগুলোই জাস্ট আমরা আবার রিভিজ রিভিজন টাইপের আলোচনা করিনি ডাউটিকালেকটরি and uh, the historical development if i go to discuss on uh, on, the, uh, on this particular thing i have to start from benjamin franklin and who, who was an 18th century uh, american uh, scientist who took uh, great interest in the science of electricity and he was quite fascinated about uh, atmospheric electricity the phenomena of lightning so he was one of the first person who took interest in uh, electricity and uh, probably many of you know that he conducted many experiments even risking his life to understand uh, what the, what is the science behind lightning and he was the discoverer of lightning rod uh, apart from uh, lightning rod uh, he also proposed the first version of the uh, conservation of uh, charge although he had not proved it but he was the first person who proposed the conservation of charge uh later on uh, after franklin another person whom we should uh, mention is the uh, coulomb all of you know coulomb's law from your plus 2 courses coulomb's law charles augustin de coulomb he was a uh, french military engineer who took great interest in um, electrostatics subject of electrostatics after his retirement he had a, a big farm house where he, he used to conduct experiments and he was trying to understand the uh, this phenomena of attraction and repulsion between charges so he first discovered this coulomb's law and uh, we are quite familiar with it so this is coulomb's law and it's a contribution from coulomb 
then came a contribution from Carl Friedrich Gauss, who was a German mathematician and physicist, and famous for uh, this Gauss's law. He had also made many other contributions in physics and mathematics, which we are not going to discuss here. The Gauss's law is one of the most important law I mean, in Maxwell equation that we know. And all these are uh, happening in the 18th, 18th century and somewhere in the beginning of 19th century. And then uh, we have we have uh, the phenomena of this uh, um, the deflection of a magnetic needle. Uh, in, um, when you bring a magnetic needle in front of current carrying wire, we see that the magnetic needle gets deflected. This was first observed by a uh, Danish physicist Hans Christian Oersted, and he first formulated the Oersted law. Uh, showing the connection between electricity and magnetism. So this was the first experiment uh, which showed actually that electricity and magnetism uh, may be connected in some way which uh, was not, not known at that time. Gradually the other people like uh, Jean Baptiste Biot and Felix Severt, they were French scientists, so we know uh, their uh, law, Biot-Severt's law, which actually states what should be the magnetic field in, uh, at, a, at a location uh, at a distance r from a, a current constant a current carrying wire which is carrying a constant current so this is giving some idea uh, what should be the magnetic field in um, near a current carrying wire then came uh, the famous ampere's law uh, uh, by andre marie ampere who actually uh, there is uh, now there are two ampere's law if you remember one is the ampere's force law and the ampere's circuital law here i am talking about ampere's circuital law which is the generalized version of this uh, relation between current and magnetic field. So he first uh, provided us this relation that if you have a current carrying a wire and you, if you consider a closed loop around this current carrying a wire and if you take a closed line integral of B dot DL, this comes out to be is some constant which you call mu zero magnetic permeability times the current enclosed by that loop. So that's the generalized uh, um, Ampere's law. And this is basically this is not not a different thing than the Biot-Savart's law, but it's a it's a it's a more general thing, more general law. The other people who contributed in the development of the subject, we must say about uh, Thomas Edison. He was an American uh, scientist, although he didn't uh, contribute uh, uh, in the theoretical development of the subject, but he was a person who was very much interested in developing applic various applications. Uh, based on the uh, science of electricity and magnetism. So discovered light bulb, phonograph, motion picture camera, and many other uh, technical devices. Probably you know that he was the person who had the, uh, I mean, had more than 1300 um, patent in his name. So see, he was a very successful uh, in terms of developing applications. And then uh, another pioneering, pioneering, applica uh, pioneering uh, contribution came from Michael Faraday who discovered uh, the phenomena of electromagnetic induction, which we know um, uh, as Faraday's law. And Faraday's law, so basically is telling you that uh, not only magnetic field, uh, the magnets are affected by current, but by, by varying the magnetic field. So if you take a closed loop and then you move a magnet uh, around, uh, uh, around the loop or move the uh, uh, magnet somewhere in the region uh, close to the loop, you can see an EMF developing in that uh, loop. So this is telling us that uh, not only magnets are affected by current, but you can also produce current or EMF. I mean, produce EMF by 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 a magnet. So th that is telling us that that they are basically uh, interconnected uh, in a some uh, unknown way, which we which was not yet clear at the time. So these were there, there were some laws like Biot-Savart's law, Ampere's law, Faraday's law. All those laws uh, were there. But there are no complete picture exact, um, exactly how electricity and magnetism are interconnected and uh, what is the complete picture. And this was basically the contribution of uh, James Clerk Maxwell uh, in the end of the 19th century. So he first proposed the set of equation by combining all these known uh, laws like Gauss's law, uh, this uh, Ampere's law, Faraday's law and uh, formulated the setup equation called Maxwell's equation, which unified uh, electricity and magnetism in a consistent, and you know, it provided us a consistent picture, uh, which were capable of explaining all the phenomena uh, of electricity and magnetism happening in nature. 
he also theoretically predicted the existence of uh, electromagnetic waves and uh, nobody actually knows at that time what is an electromagnetic wave like i mean today we are discovering i mean um, um, gravitational waves and we are excited about that right uh, although that was predicted uh, one century back uh, so now we are learning about gravitational wave but imagine a situation uh, 100 years back more than 100 years back when i mean nobody know about electromagnetic wave even at that time uh, i mean uh, we, people were not familiar with uh, uh, i mean that uh, with the fact that the light is an electromagnetic wave so i mean there there were different ideas about light but nobody knew that light is an electromagnetic wave and nowadays you know that okay there are a whole spectrum of electromagnetic wave i mean x rays gamma rays opticals and all those uh, i mean different uh, electromagnetic radiation i mean they cover uh, the property and I mean, all of them basically are electromagnetic waves so this was a, a theoretical prediction purely from maxwell's equations so uh, maxwell actually uh, requested one of his student graduate student at the time uh, probably you know the name harch uh, to actually conduct the experiment uh, to look for possibility of uh, electromagnetic wave but at that time Hart was not that much interested for so he was not um, uh, not interested and see so he, he left the I mean lab and he was he was working for another uh, um, laboratory where he was doing something else but Maxwell was a short-lived person he died at the age of uh, nearly 48 years and then after his death, um, I mean, uh, this person Heinrich Rudolf Harch, uh, he was a German German uh, physicist, and he was interested in conducting an experiment, and he successfully, for the first time, demonstrated the existence of electromagnetic waves. Uh, so this was, uh, um, I mean, both of these are all these are basically uh, pioneering contributions, which I talked in the last two slides and helped uh, in the development of the subject of uh, electrodynamics. So you can clearly see that a lot of experiment actually were behind the development. I mean, most of them were, I mean, if you look at the list of uh, scientists I talked about, most of them were basically um, experimentalists other than this Maxwell and uh, Gauss. So experiment uh, in physics uh, definitely play a very important role in, in the uh, development of a subject. So, uh, so this is basically. So, I have just summarized the historical development of the subject. And now, let us um, uh, go to Maxwell's equation and try to recapitulate what we have learned earlier in um, your previous course, or maybe in BSc also. You have attended another course in electro. Uh, it's probably not in electrodynamics, but as electricity and magnetism. So, these equations and all those things I am going to discuss are already uh, known to you. So let us uh, gradually uh, build up the story. So now, what is what are Maxwell's equations? So the first equation uh, um, is the Gauss's law, which you are familiar. Um, I mean, electro in electrostatics. So what is Gauss's law? Uh, if you look at this uh, formula, this is telling us something about the relation between the electric field and the charge density. So if you write this law in in in, in integral form or the integral form is uh, some uh, uh, close uh, integral over a closed surface e dot uh, n d a is equal to q by epsilon naught so where q is the enclosed charge so if so basically the idea is that if you have a closed surface around some uh, charge distribution the flux which is threading across this surface is some constant time the total charge enclosed by the surface and the same uh, formula can be recast in this form by using divergence theorem you have e dot n dA, so you integral over a closed surface. You write that divergence of e dV, and Q enclosed is written as rho dV. So if you just uh, remove this integral, you have divergence of e equal to rho by epsilon naught. And uh, you see, uh, we have another law, uh, the Coulomb's law, which tells us uh, what should be the electric field uh, in front of a point charge. But the Coulomb's law and Gauss's law, basically, they are telling us the same thing. But Coulomb's law um, cannot be applied to arbitrary charge distribution because it has it is limited uh, due to its uh, form. Because uh, if I ask you to calculate the uh, electric field uh, or a potential, okay, I will come to potential later. Electric field for a uh, char charge distribution it is simple for maybe uh, a number of charges. 5, 10, like that. But if I provide you arbitrary charge distribution, it will be gradually difficult to calculate the electric field using Coulomb's law. 
So in that sense, Gauss's law is much more advantageous, particularly when you have some kind of symmetry, because you see once you know that, and what is this divergence? It's a, it's a vector operator. You, pro, you already know from your uh, vector analysis course what is a gradient, what is uh, what is divergence, what is called these different types of operator. So a divergence when you operate this divergence operator on a vector, you get a scalar now some number. So it could be positive, it could be negative, it could be zero, and it it, it of each of these numbers have a physical interpretation. If it is positive, you know the lines of forces are or line, it, I should not call lines of forces the vector the, the vector if you draw the uh, the vector field, the the vectors are uh, basically if you find that the divergence of a vector field is positive somewhere, this is diverging or converging depending on the signature of the divergence. So it is telling you that by just simply calculating the divergence of the electric field, you can uh, you can equate that to the charge density and figure out what is the electric field. Well, there is another another, uh, another um, uh, equation that you have probably learned from this. Uh, in electrostatics, you have another equation. Well, what is that equation? If you uh, take a point charge and take it along a closed path, the total work done will be zero. So E dot DL along a closed path will be zero. What what does that what does that imply? So that is implying that if I take any two arbitrary point A and B in an electrostatic field and take the charge from point A to B, there are different possible paths. But whatever whatever, whatever path you choose, the work done by this uh, this translation of charge from A to B will be exactly the same. That's why the, when you calculated it, E dot DL across the closed path, it is zero. So that's the property of a conservative field. And wh whenever you have a conservative field, uh, the vector field E can be written as, a, as uh, the gradient of a scalar function. So that's why we are able to write E equal to minus grad of phi. Phi is a scalar function, which you call scalar potential. And when you operate grad on phi, you get a vector quantity. That's the electric field E equal to minus grad phi. And if you substitute that E equal to minus grad phi in this equation, Gauss's law, you, see, you simply see that that will come out Laplacian of phi equal to minus rho by epsilon naught. And that is uh, known as Poisson's equation, right? So, and if you have a situation where th there is no charge density, then you put rho equal to zero, you, you have Laplacian of phi equal to zero, which is called Laplace equation. So these are the main three uh, tools that we have to calculate electric field from a charge distribution. One first is the Coulomb's law, which definitely uh, is uh, which, which powerful, but it has certain limitation. Then we have this Gauss's law, and then we have this Laplace equation and Poisson equation. So by solving Laplace equation or Poisson equation, you obtain the scalar potential. And if you take gradient of that, you get electric field. So these are the three different way by which you can calculate electric field from a given charge distribution. The advantage of Laplace equation and Poisson equation is that um, you can actually solve this equation for different kind of configuration if you have the boundary conditions at your hand, uh, depending on spherical symmetry or cylindrical symmetry or uh, Cartesian symmetry, you can actually solve uh, the Poisson equation or Laplace equation in different situations and calculate the electric field very easily. I hope you have learned these things in your previous semester course because these are, these are the basically topics which should be covered in the uh, MPC 2.3. And uh, um, I should also mention that electrostatics is all about uh, static charges where you assume that all the point charges basically fixed in space, they're not moving around. So and the field created by that uh, static charge distribution is called uh, electrostatic field. Now, right now we are not going to discuss about electrostatics, but I have just summarized uh, that what, whatever you have learned in your um, uh, electrostatics, uh, my electrostatics. So now uh, the second law, if I go to, but this is this is a, one of the most important law in Maxwell's equation. And the second law is uh, about magnetic field. It's a very similar form. So it is Gauss's law again for magnetic field for which uh, we have divergence of magnetic field B is equal to zero. Now there is a stark difference here. If you look at the right hand side, it is zero here. So it is telling you that if you take divergence of magnetic field, it will be always zero. And this is a very uh, powerful statement uh, because it is telling us that uh, like uh, electric, uh, I mean, e e uh, like electric charges where we have uh, two different polarity, positive charges and negative charges, right? So we can talk about monopoles in electrostatics. 
but in uh, nature we do not see the existence of magnetic monopoles okay they always come in pairs and if you really want to understand it you can uh, dive deep into the origin of magnetism but even then i mean there is no clear answer why there is no magnetic monopole in nature so this is basically a consequence of the non existence of magnetic monopoles in nature which is divergence of b equal to 0 and i mean I, i'm not going to discuss the um, in the whole uh, um, idea behind magnetostatics again because it's very similar just like electrostatics here you see divergence of b equal to 0 so clearly b can be derived from a vector potential you can write b as a function equal to curl of some uh, vector function a which is called, is called vector potential so b is equal to curl of a and uh, in the very similar manner if you uh, plug in that here you can again uh, get two equation uh, uh, or i should say three equation because it's a vector function so just like uh, laplacian of phi equal to rho by minus of rho by epsilon naught you will get laplacian of a vector a equal to minus mu zero uh, by i think mu zero mu zero j mu zero, not by mu zero times j j where j is the current density and again, you solve this uh, Poisson equation or Laplace, in, Laplace equation in magnetostatics to calculate uh, uh, magnetic uh, uh, field from the vector potential. You first calculate the vector potential and then take curl of it to get a magnetic field. The other techniques are here, the this uh, Biosevert's law, just like Coulomb's law, you can also calculate magnetic field using Biosevert's law. And also you have Ampere's law, just like Gauss's law, you have um, you can uh, apply that. But right now I'm, I'm not going to uh, discuss about those things. So the primarily the two uh, equation coming from electrostatics and magnetostatics, which form the um, uh, which which form a part of Maxwell's equation. And uh, then we have the third equation is Faraday's law which is about electromagnetic induction. So Faraday for the first time showed that if you change the magnetic flux across, this, across a surface, if you change the magnetic flux across a closed surface, closed loop, sorry, a closed loop, you can induce an EMF in the loop. And what is that EMF? So he did an E dot DL across the closed path that is equal to minus of D phi B DT. What is phi B? The magnetic flux threading that closed loop. And that magnetic flux can be written as again V dot NDA and uh, E dot DL can be converted to Carl of E and uh, DA by using Stokes theorem. And you can equate, equate the two sides to get Carl of E equal to minus WDT. So what it is saying us that uh, electric field uh, can be also generated by changing magnetic field, time variation of magnetic field that is uh, the statement of Faraday's law and this minus sign in front of del B del T is telling us that uh, the direction of the in induced EMF is coming from Lenz's law again I'm not going to discuss that all all these stuffs are already uh, known to you so I'm just uh, uh, talking about the basic things which are which should be known before we start the course and then uh, came the Ampere's law but if this is modified Ampere's law the original Ampere's law, if you, if you look at the original Ampere's law, that is V dot DL along a closed loop equal to mu naught magnetic permeability times the current enclosed by that loop, I enclosed. And again, if you have use Stokes theorem, V dot DL can be written as curl of V dot NDA is equal to mu zero, I can be written as J dot NDA. So you can and convert that uh, to a differential form so where Ampere's law comes as curl of B equal to mu naught times the current density J. But if you look at this law carefully, you will see that uh, this is uh, not consistent, right? Uh, and nobody noticed this until uh, Maxwell's came, uh, came with uh, this uh, deficiency of Ampere's law and he provided also a solution to that problem. If you take a uh, say, Mm, divergence of Carl of B, what do you get? If you take divergence of Carl of B in the left hand side, you see that will be simply mu naught into divergence of J. Now divergence of J, so, so if, if, you, if I ask you what is the divergence of a Carl of a vector, that has to be zero anyway. Now divergence of J on the right hand side, this could be zero or maybe non-zero depending on situation. It will be zero if divergence of J is zero for a steady current. but it is not the general scenario. You have the equation of continuity, 
conservation of charge where you have learned divergence of j plus del rho del t where rho is a charge density equal to zero so divergence of j equal to basically minus of del rho del t right so if i write here divergence of a uh, divergence of a uh, car of v on the left hand side and here divergence of j so divergence of j is basically uh, minus of del rho del t and what is rho you can see rho is epsilon zero divergence of e so if you plug in there you will see that it is not the divergence of j which is zero but divergence of j plus epsilon zero del e del t which should be zero now there are many different routes uh, to arrive at this uh, conclusion but i am just stating one of the simplest one and uh, so maxwell basically showed that uh, that it is not the curl of b uh, um, which should be equal to mu not j but j plus epsilon 0 del e del t clearly if you just look at the dimension epsilon 0 del e del t has a dimension of current density and this is called displacement current density and actually maxwell was motivated uh, from a different angle because when he looked at this equation existing uh, uh, equation gauss's law of electrostatics and magnetostatics and faraday's law he noted that uh, he, uh, that you see electric field and magnetic field i mean if you look at the uh, equations electric field is, is sourced by uh, the charge density so if, if you have charge that can create electric field right also faraday's law tells us that electric field can be produced by the time variance variation of magnetic field so there are two di distinct sources of electric field one is the charge density another is the time variation of magnetic field similarly if i look at the magnetic field what uh, what we see if we just look at the ampere's law we have magnetic field produced by current only but there are no such term as daily del t in this equation so if if symmetry has to be uh, uh, has to hold then uh, there should be some some kind of del t term somewhere in the equation either uh, here there is no chance of get, getting such a term because divergence of b divergence of b will be always zero so this is the, this is the this is the only uh, i mean place where we can have such a term and uh, by using that argument and uh, uh, so he showed that if you ha if we have a term like this then probably you have uh, learned about this famous uh, thought experiment this capacitor experiment where you you actually uh, put a closed loop inside a capacitor and uh, a loop an, uh, around the wire connecting to the capacitor and calculate the magnetic field and so the inadequacy of ampere's law uh, i am not going to discuss that uh, here you can find it in griffith's book but um, many other book also contain that example that's a famous example uh, for explaining displacement current so displacement current is basically another type of current which you can uh, think about which arises due to the time variation of electric field so uh, just like the normal current which is which arises due to the motion of uh, free charges like electrons this is not uh, uh, associated with any the displacement current is not associated with the movement of any charge particle anywhere it is purely arising from the time variation of electric field and uh, uh, the only way to interpret it is basically f zero del t this is uh, this has a dimension of current density and curl of v is equal to mu zero into j plus j d jd is epsilon zero del del t the, the displacement current uh, current density and interestingly once you uh, introduce this term we have a complete framework for explaining all the known uh, i mean electric and magnetic phenomena in nature basically you should call it not electric and magnetic but rather than electromagnetic because they are uh, connected with each other so maxwell's equations are capable of explaining all electro electromagnetic phenomena in nature and this is a very beautiful example where uh, you see only these four equations are capable of explaining all the electromagnetic phenomena and the goal of science is basically, science is basically this because when you uh, study science we uh, we start with uh, observing nature okay so you we see the various uh, uh, things and then try to find out a common uh, common connecting rule which can explain uh, all of them so maxwell's equations are very beautiful example of such things uh, such a such a uh, beautiful science where you can explain uh, all electromagnetic phenomena by using these four simple equations and uh, most of electrodynamics basically is solving maxwell's equation in different situations in different conditions uh, we will gradually learn that 
well so these are known thing not new to you but let us uh, i mean revise these things now if you look at these equations you see these equations if you take these four equations and and go to vacuum or um, empty space you see in empty empty space there are no free charges so rho is zero right and there are uh, no uh, current in empty space so j is zero so if i just plug in rho equal to zero and j equal to zero in maximum equation they these four equation take the form uh, these forms so divergence of e equal to zero divergence of b equal to zero curl of e equal to minus of uh, del b del t and curl of b equal to mu naught epsilon naught del e del t and uh, mu naught and epsilon naught are the property of uh, free space magnetic permeability and uh, electric permittivity you know that and if we take curl of the third equation is a curl of curl of e so there will be two term one is laplacian of e another will be divergence of e divergence of e zero and in this this side will be del del t of curl of b but curl of b already known here so if you put curl of b on the right hand side and put divergence of e equal to zero similarly if you take curl of curl of b you will have two term laplacian of b and divergence of b divergence of b again zero so laplacian of b and on the right hand side you have curl of e curl of e not known from the third equation you substitute that you will get two such equations for e and b one for e and that for b and if you look at the equation carefully they are nothing but wave equation and from these two wave equation maxwells came to the conclusion that there can be electromagnetic waves in nature which uh, may not require any medium right why because you see it is the del e del t and del b del t term which actually gives rise to such possibility of such electromagnetic wave because they sustain each other time variation of electric field produces a magnetic field and the time variation of magnetic field produces a time varying time varying electric field so they support each other they sustain each other and by that way you don't need a medium electric field and magnetic field one produces the other and this goes on and on and on so you can have a scenario where a electromagnetic disturbance propagate through space so electromagnetic field you know we are using the concept of field so electromagnetic field is that at each and every point you have a well defined value of e and v so electric although we will soon learn that uh, electric field and magnetic fields are not vectors but for the time being let us imagine them as vectors so e and v are basically two vectors defining our electromagnetic field and any disturbance in this magnetic field propagates uh, Uh, as waves of electromagnetic uh, propagates as electromagnetic waves electric and field and magnetic field and now uh, if you compare this two equations with the wave equation you clearly see that it tells us that the electromagnetic waves will travel with the speed of uh, v so if you compare this v with the with this uh, this uh, this term you not if sudden not you will see that v equal to 1 over square root of mu not epsilon not and which is a number which comes out to be 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second the speed of electromagnetic wave right theoretical prediction okay uh, the measurement of uh, speed of uh, light was a different thing probably learned about fizeau experiment and all other experiment for uh, measuring speed of light this is theoretical theoretical prediction from maxwell's equation and uh, uh, remember that the maxwell's contribution was tremendously important why because you see unless you have this term over there the displacement current density it is not possible uh, i mean the existence of electromagnetic wave is not possible just look at the equation you see if you have if if this term is not there in this equation suppose this equation there is no such term so this is zero so if i come here in empty space there is no current and if this term is not there curl of b will be zero and if we then take curl of curl of b we will have the laplacian of b equal to zero you see this term will not be there so there is no possibility of having an electromagnetic wave because here electric field is just uh, providing 
the sustenance of magnetic field and the vice versa and that's why electromagnetic wave is propagating with a fixed speed which is uh, 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second so this term is very important displacement current density epsilon 0 daily delta term which was added by maxwell led to the theoretical prediction of the existence of electromagnetic wave well uh, so these are about uh, maxwell's equation so maxwell's equation predicts the existence of uh, electromagnetic waves now now if you look at these wave equations these wave equations we can find out a set of plane wave solution for these waves. These are probably known to you. You see, this E is the electric field at a location R, vector R, at time t. So the wave, which, which is oscillation, amplitude, phase, all those have to be there. So you see, this is E0 and uh, is the complex amplitude. Why it is complex? And uh, with this e to the power i k is the wave vector you know k, k what is k k is the wave vector showing you the direction of propagation of the electromagnetic wave r is the position vector of the particular point omega is the frequency of the electromagnetic wave and t is time so here we are talking about a uh, monochromatic uh, uh, wave so this is a plane wave solution of maxwell's uh, this uh, uh, wave equations so e and b can be written in this form and why e0 and b0 are complex because because they incorporate the, the any possibility of any phase inside this so it's, 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 suppose e to the power i k dot r minus omega t this is phase plus that suppose there is some some initial phase delta e to the power i k dot r minus omega t plus delta so this e to the power i delta term can be taken outside so you have some real amplitude and when you couple that this with this e to the power i delta that becomes complex so this e0 tilde actually incorporate that e to the power i delta term inside it so that's why it's complex and when you look at when you break up the terms basically e0 is a vector here i have taken an arbitrary vector along any direction so that's why it has x component y component and z component and this is the phase term it's the power i delta initial phase term that's why it's complex i told you so for example suppose i, I i'm considering an electromagnetic wave which is propagating along z direction and the electric field is polarized along say x direction so then this amplitude this complex amplitude will be simply e0 x x cap these two terms will be zero y component z component will be zero e to the power i delta and here we will we'll have e to the power i k z minus omega t so where we prefer, because you have only z component of it so k z k z minus omega t and then there should be a direction that is the direction of the electric field that should be x cap here we have we should write x cap that is the direction of the electric field and uh, probably you have already learned about polarization different kind of polarization of electromagnetic wave linear polarization circular polarization and elliptical polarization so uh, i mean these are very simple thing if you look just look at this equation and if suppose I, 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 as the example that i stated right now that say suppose e z t equal to e 0 x cap e to the power i k z minus omega t then this x cap is telling us that the electric field is linearly polarized so this is fixed along x direction now if i take two such electromagnetic wave and combine them together and if there are no phase difference between them and both of them are polarized in the same direction then we will have again a linearly polarized electromagnetic wave because uh, it is simply sum of two uh, two different electric uh, electric field at each, at each and every location but if i change the phase if the, allow the phase to vary then in general we can have elliptical polarization the electric field will not be fixed uh, along a particular direction it will uh, rotate it will rotate around uh, the tip of the electric field vector will rotate uh, uh, around an ellipse while traveling uh, towards a particular direction that's called elliptically polarized light, polarized light and if you take the amplitudes of the two electric uh, uh, fields to be same so i have taken two electric field e1 and e2 so e01 and e02 are same and suppose the phase is uh, say pi by 2 phase, there is a phase difference of pi by 2 then you can show that the tip of the electric field vector will trace a, a circle which we know as circularly polarized light 
all these things are uh, expected to be uh, discussed uh, in the previous course so i'm just summarizing them uh, definitely if you have any question i, I can address them so there are three different kind of polarization. One is linearly polarized polarization. Then you have uh, this uh, circular polarization, and that's elliptical polarization. And all all of them can be obtained from this uh, this plane wave solution. Now, if you look at these two solution, it is interesting to uh, observe that if you operate on this divergence of E or divergence of B, of or calculate curl of E or curl of B, you can arrive at two very important conclusion simply take the solution and uh, uh, and take divergence of it and curl of it you will see you can it can be easily shown that the electromagnetic waves are transverse in nature uh, what what is what is the meaning of that that means that uh, we cannot have any parallel component of electric field and magnetic field along the direction of propagation that means uh, that uh, there uh, the electric field magnetic field and the wave vector are orthogonal to each other and there is a simple relationship between b and e and k so b is equal to 1 by c k cap this is the unit vector along the direction of propagation k is the wave vector k cap cross e probably you have used this equation many times while getting b from e or e from b uh, in your bsc uh, also, maybe in the last semester. So this is an important relationship between E and B. And there is another important uh, conclusion that you can obtain from this is that E and B, these two fields, are in phase with each other. Each other. There is uh, so e, I mean that means if you look at this, look at this picture. Okay, so this is a picture of electromagnetic wave. So you can see the electric the electric field vector is oscillating. And see this, this red is showing you the electric field, and the blue is showing the magnetic field, and the wave is propagating along this direction. So, it's k vector, e vector, and b vector are orthogonal to each other. You see, uh, and the magnitude of the amplitude of the electric field is changing. So, e to the power i that means if you take the real part, right, cos or sine depending on. So, if you if I take this form e to the power i, so using De Moivre's theorem, cos plus and cos and sine, you can take the real part. So. Uh, sine or cos so you see that this is a this is sinusoidal form and they are in phase what do i mean by that you see maxima of electric field and ma maxima of magnetic field occurs at the same place same time you see minima of electric field minima of magnetic field they occur at the same place same time so they are in phase with each other right so this is the picture and this is the wavelength one maxima to the other maxima and Clearly, you can see that the electromagnetic waves uh, didn't require any medium because of this uh, displacement current term. Because electric field, uh, magnetic field can be produced by the time variation of electric field, so they can sustain each other and propagate through empty space with the empty space um, at the speed of uh, three into ten power eight meter per second. Well, so uh, these are the basics of electromagnetic waves. Then uh, you see uh, before going to this electromagnetic field. So electromagnetic field can store energy. If you uh, have uh, uh, seen this, that uh, what is the energy density of uh, electrostatic field? What is that? Half of epsilon zero e square. And what is the energy density of magnetostatic field? Half of b square by mu naught. So if you add them up, half of e square by uh, half of e epsilon naught into uh, e square plus half of b square by mu naught. This is the energy density of the electromagnetic field. So electromagnetic field has some energy density. Now imagine, uh, uh, imagine a, a volume. Okay, volume which is containing some point charge some of them are static some of them are moving because Maxwell's equation is about the general situation where uh, charges are not need not be fixed or we, we need not ha uh, to have a steady current right both can vary that's why you have this daily delta del v delta term this is a general scenario so imagine a volume which is containing a set of point charges uh, some of them some of them them are fixed and some of them are moving around so we can have uh, currents also because charges are moving current is nothing but, but but motion of charges and in this volume uh, suppose this volume is subjected to an electromagnetic field so we have set 
pre-existing electromagnetic field where we uh, where we put this uh, volume uh, uh, inside so we put a, this collection of charge and uh, current inside an electromagnetic field so what will happen because electromagnetic field interacts with charge and current so it will exert force on the charged particles and it will do some work so i'm talking about pointing theorem so what is pointing theorem it is it, it telling us that if we have a if it's a collection of charge and current inside an electromagnetic field the electromagnetic field will do work on this collection of charge and current and basically the energy we arrive at the energy conservation equation pointing theorem is nothing but the energy conservation equation so the work done by the electromagnetic field on this uh, charge and current equal to equal to the decrease of stored charge from the electromagnetic field which i just told that half epsilon naught square plus half uh, b square by mu naught this is the store storage of uh, energy inside the electromagnetic field if you multiply volume with energy density you get the total total energy so the work done by the electromagnetic field is equal to the decrease of decrease of electromagnetic energy stored in the field minus the energy that flowed across the surface bounding that volume so that volume which you considered is bounded by some closed surface so there is a possibility that some radiation may come out from that volume which will pass through this surface bounding that volume now how that radiation will be produced i have not discussed that yet that that is the topic of this uh, semester's uh, course because how the uh, charged particles or currents can produce radiation that we will discuss later but there is a possibility that charge distribution current distribution can produce radiation and that radiation will pass through that bounding surface that is you are balancing the, so the total work done by the electromagnetic field equal to decrease in the energy of the electromagnetic field minus the uh, the radiation which flowed out of that volume so energy is not destroyed in this process whatever energy has flown out of that volume and whatever decrease has been taken place in the store of the electromagnetic field is equal to the work done by the electromagnetic field and in this equation we have this uh, this uh, equation of flux density the radiation flux density which is called pointing vector so if you know the electric field and magnetic field uh, of electro in in an in, in electromagnetic field you can calculate the energy flowing per unit area per unit time which is called pointing vector this is a vector quantity the direction of flow of energy which you get by taking cross product of e and b and divide it by the magnetic permeability this is called pointing vector so what we see that the electromagnetic waves can carry energy from one place to other so energy can be transported from one place to other similarly if we go to momentum conservation we can see that uh, not only energy but electromagnetic waves can also carry momentum from one place to other and momentum what is momentum uh, basically if you go to newton's law f is dp dt force is dp dt rate of change of momentum and since we are talking about the force acting on the charged particles in current by the electromagnetic field you can write that this uh, this in terms of momentum also where you can show in a very similar manner that uh, the force acting on the charged particles in current is equal to decrease in the momentum storage of the electromagnetic field and what is the momentum storage possibly i don't know whether it has been already addressed in the previous course the momentum density of electromagnetic field can be written as mu not epsilon not times the pointing vector s this is called momentum density so any electromagnetic wave of uh, sorry electromagnetic field has momentum density which is mu not epsilon not into s so when the electromagnetic field is uh, doing some work on a set of charge and current distribution it is basically losing its momentum storage so this uh, this force acting on this set of charged particles and current will be equal to the loss of this uh, momentum rate of loss of momentum from the momentum storage minus the momentum flow across the surface bounding that volume now uh, th that's where this concept of maxwell stress tensor comes in now maxwell stress tensor if you see this is basically showing you the 
flux of momentum this is this are just this is the area this is basically the force per unit area either you think it in terms of pressure or shear so tij is called maxwell's stress tensor so what it is suggesting us that if we take uh, any arbitrary charge and current distribution inside an electromagnetic field there is a possibility that the electromagnetic field can actually shrink this volume expand this volume or deform this volume it can change the shape of the volume because it can it can actually have it, 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 there is a possibility the electromagnetic wave can carry momentum momentum means basically uh, you can if you look at the momentum dp dt is force so there is a possibility that the electromagnetic uh, field can exert force electromagnetic wave can exert force on that volume and shrink it or deform it so this tij is called maxwell's stress tensor and uh, the unit of tij is a force per unit area acting on the ith direction on a surface oriented in the j direction what do i mean by that suppose txx what is the meaning of that txx is basically the force acting per unit area on that volume that area means that, that area covering that volume force acting in x direction on a surface which is oriented along x direction that means oriented uh, on the uh, i mean this surface is lying on the yz plane so x is uh, normal to that surface so txx if i consider txs it is the force acting on a surface which is lying in the yz yz plane and the force is along x direction so this is acting normally to the surface that's why it is called pressure the so pressure pressure can change the volume if if i have pressure on a on a surface bounding a volume the volume can shrink it can change the volume so this is pressure and similarly tyy and tjz are also pressure so all so this is basically three cross three matrix although it's not matrix it's called it's a tensor which is nine element so diagonal elements are basically pressure and the all diagonal elements are shear if i take say xy txy what is txy the force acting along x direction but the surface is oriented in the xz it is along the uh, lying in the plane of uh, uh, i'm sorry uh, so x y is the direction so y is the so y is the normal that means it, it has to be xz plane so if that is the case then the this txy will be tangential to the surface so any force which is acting tangential to a surface is labeled as shear that means you see uh, this this is responsible for deformation of a volume like txx is a pressure which it, which can change the volume shrink or expand it but txy is acti act acting tangentially to the surface similarly txz tyz all those are shears acting on the surface so all these uh, six uh, of diagonal components represent shear uh, um, around different surfaces which can change the shape of the volume in the electromagnetic field so these are about uh, energy and momentum carried by electromagnetic waves uh, so now uh, let us discuss uh, uh, the maxwell equations in matter we have discussed uh, maxwell equations in vacuum or empty space where we have seen that it can give rise to electromagnetic waves which travel at the speed of uh, 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second and it can carry energy it can carry momentum and so on now we shall discuss about uh, the maxwell equations in uh, matter so in matter uh, we have uh, d in place of e what is d d is called electric displacement if you consider uh, say dielectric Uh, so in dielectric we have uh, the phenomena of polarization you have probably learned this that if i have a pole uh, this is if you have a dielectric i mean it can uh, it give rise to some uh, bound uh, volume charge density and surface charge density right so there can be two different types of charge density free charge density is in in general uh, present in say, say metals or some other material where there are free electrons but in dielectric there are no free charges but we can all always think about a combined system suppose a dielectric is encased inside a metal box or say a metal is covered by a dielectric layer so that's a combined system we can have both free charge as well as bound charge right so keeping that in mind that we can have both free charge and bound charge in a system we should try to write down the gauss's law in general form so what is the general form of uh, gauss's law 
this is the general form uh, in earlier earlier we have seen the divergence of e equal to rho by epsilon not rho was the free charge but rho can be written as rho free plus rho brown bound so uh, the charge density can be of two different type free charge density and bound charge density so rho equal to rho free plus rho bound now what is rho bound in dielectric this possibility arises so rho bound will be minus of divergence of p p is called the intensity of polarization p dipole moment per unit volume so this rho bound will be minus divergence of p so if here if you write divergence of e equal to rho free plus rho bound which is divergence of minus of divergence of uh, uh, p then you can take p on that side and couple e and p so epsilon 0 e plus p divergence of epsilon 0 e plus p is equal to rho free and this epsilon 0 e plus p th that is again combination of two vector e and p that is labeled as electric displacement d so d is another vector which is related to electric field and polarization p in a certain way similarly if i go to uh, the second equation second equation doesn't change because as you have stated earlier that magnetic monopole doesn't exist in any circumstances so divergence and divergence of b will be zero you can uh, be confident about that and then the third equation is again the same form curl of e equal to minus of del b del t and the fourth equation here we have curl of h what is h h is again just like d and e we have relationship between h and b right and what is that relationship okay i am writing this here so d equal to epsilon 0 e plus p similarly in any magnetic material i mean you can see that the h is the field strength or field in sometimes it called the field intensity h equal to magnetic field by mu not minus m in an analogous manner i mean just like polarization you can have magnetization if we magnetize a substance there will be magnetic moment per unit volume right so this m h and m are related in this way right so the fourth equation the modified ampere's law which we learned earlier curl of b equal to mu not j plus mu not epsilon not del e del t now it takes this form why because see h equal to simply b by mu zero minus m so you can see that mu not will i mean cancelled from both side and uh, d you know d, d equal to epsilon zero so in place of e we have d so these four equations basically shows you maxwell's uh, form of maxwell's equation inside matter where you can have the possibility of free charge density free current density and bound charge density right and bound current density all as well right uh, because this j free is the free current density similarly you can have a bound current density right so which uh, um, uh, uh, arises in a material which is magnetized right so again these are the subject of electrostatics and magnetostatics which i am not going to cover and uh, which uh, must have been uh, completed in the previous semester now uh, if i uh, uh, go to linear media what do i mean by linear media look at these equations d equal to epsilon 0 e plus p h equal to b by mu not minus m linear media is basically you see uh, eventually p can be uh, i mean eventually you can express the relationship between d and e as uh, d equal to some relative uh, permittivity times uh, the electric field because p can be written as epsilon 0 chi into e polarization is proportional to electric field p p is proportional to electric field so p can be replaced by some constant time electric field if you take that constant term uh, common and separate it you will see that some some constant time the electric field so d and e are linearly related and those uh, mediums are called linear medium of course uh, why it is called linear medium because there are other possible mediums where you can have a uh, higher order terms like it is not necessary to have a, a linear relationship, relationship between p and e and they can be uh, there can be higher order terms so right now we are talking about linear medium where you can write d equal to epsilon e and h equal to b by mu not so these are linear medium and homogeneous medium as well because we are assuming that the permittivity magnetic uh, permeability and the electric permittivity doesn't change from place to place they are same everywhere that they are called homogeneous medium 
Uh, otherwise, 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 they will become a tensor because uh, because then each and every direction may have a different value of epsilon and mu. Then it will be difficult to solve because then then there will be a set of equations, uh, and that's a general scenario. We are not going to discuss that here. So, and, and in linear media, there are no free charges. Uh, if of course, if there are no free charges and free current, then we can write down the equations uh, in the previous slide in this form. Because you see, in the previous page, divergence of d was equal to rho free. There is no free charge, so that will be zero. If there is no free current density, J will be zero. So these are the Maxwell's equation in a linear homogeneous medium. Clearly, you can see that uh, again we can have wave equation inside this linear medium, just like uh, electromagnetic waves in vacuum. The only difference, the only difference. uh is that uh, now the speed of this electromagnetic will will be different than uh, that we had in vacuum so, so here i have just uh, put d equal to epsilon e and here again d equal to epsilon e so these four equation again can be recast in this form uh, based on the assumption that uh, we have a homogeneous medium and the d and e are linearly related and also b and h are linearly related under these assumptions you can write down the four equation in this form which again tells us that we can write down two wave equation each for e and b two wave equation but this time the speed of propagation of the electromagnetic wave, wave will be sim simply 1 over square root of mu into epsilon not mu not into epsilon not that was the case for Empty space in vacuum. That was a constant, three into ten power eight meter per second. So you can clearly see, for depending on the medium, the speed of electromagnetic wave can change, right? So if mu and epsilon changes, the speed of the wave changes. Uh, one minute. Now, uh, now. Uh, so we because in indronil told me that uh, particularly uh, about some some topics like uh, reflection and refraction uh, at the boundary of two mediums and uh, also about the different phenomena like reflection refraction uh, polarization uh, dispersion uh, and also propagation of electromagnetic waves in uh, conductor but these are a, a whole uh, lot there are a whole, these are a, a whole lot of topics uh, which uh, probably i will not be able to uh, cover uh, all of them but i will try to at least touch the basics of each topics right so uh, that's why i have designed my talk in such a way that um, I, i can uh, just at least touch upon those topics and uh, clarify if you have any doubts on those topics uh, um, if you are interested in detailed calculation probably i will provide you some uh, Uh, pdf notes i will write down some hand uh, hand it in notes and scan and uh, upload uh, those in your whatsapp group if you are but again um, these uh, topics which i am discussing right now or for the this week uh, will be not part of the uh, i mean part of the course that we are supposed uh, to learn in this semester so this is basically just a revision okay uh, you can just um, just uh, just revise the things that you already know okay now uh uh how much time we have left probably i am so hello hello yes sir yes sir koto samay chhe boto class ki ami ami dekhte pachhi slide ami ami mane screen er samne achi to amar kache ghori nei koto kon samay chhe oh 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 tomader tomader class ache mane na tomader ki na amar kache ghori আচ্ছা নেই তাহলে যেটা যেটা তাহলে তাহলে আমরা এখানেই থামি রাইট যেহেতু অলরেডি ওভার হয়ে গেছে আমি পরের দিন থেকে পুরো একটা অ্যালার্ম সেট করে রাখবো হ্যাঁ যাতে কোনো পরে ক্লাস থাকলে সমস্যা হয় ঠিক আছে তো এখন যেটা বলার আমার যে আমরা যেটা আলোচনা করলাম এই প্রায় পুরোটাই তোমাদের জানা আমি এই নেক্সট দুই তিনটা লেকচার যেটা ডিজাইন করেছি সেটা মেইনলি ওই ইন্টারনালি কথা মাথায় রেখে ইন্টারনালি যেটা বলেছিল যে ওই মানে ম্যাক্সুস ইকুয়েশনের পরের দিকগুলো খুব একটা স্কোপ ছিল না মানে কারো কিছু করার নেই মানে প্যান্ডেমিকের জন্য ক্লাস মাঝখানে বন্ধ হয়ে যায় টিচাররাও মানে অনলাইন কতটুকু কি করতে পেরেছেন তখন বলা মুশকিল সো আই আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড দ্য সিচুয়েশন তো আমরা যেহেতু আমি আরেকটা জিনিস বলে রাখি যে এই এই বেসিক মানে জিনিসগুলো জানার পরে ধরো এই কন্ডাক্টরের মধ্যে ইলেকট্রোম্যাগনেটিক ওয়েভের প্রোপ্রাগেশন 
all those are basically algebraic details once you understand maxwell equation you just have to some uh, do a lot of algebra to figure out je ki hobe kothay attenuation hobe kothay absorption hobe ki hobe na hobe to eigulo mane তুমি চাইলে মানে খুব নিজে নিজে করে ফেলতে পারো ডিফিকাল্ট কিছু নয় আর আমাদের এই পার্টিকুলার কোর্সটার সঙ্গে খুব একটা কানেকশনও নেই এগুলোর বেসিক যেগুলো আজকে আলোচনা করলাম সেগুলো নিশ্চয়ই জানতে হবে তবে যেগুলো আগের সেমিস্টারে মানে সেকেন্ড হাফে যেগুলো ছিল সেগুলো সবই যে জানতে হবে তার কোনো মানে নেই রাইট তবে হ্যাঁ আমি যেটা বলবো জেনে নেওয়া তো অবশ্যই উচিত কারণ আনফর্চুনেটলি সিচুয়েশনটার জন্য তোমরা কোর্সটা ওইভাবে ভালোভাবে কমপ্লিট করতে পারো নি আমি যেটা আবার বলছি যে আমি যদি সময় পাই অ্যাগেন কারণ ব্যাপারটা হচ্ছে আমি যেহেতু এই কোর্সটা পড়ানোর জন্য আমার এই কোর্সটা অ্যাসাইন্ড সুতরাং বুঝতেই পারছো দেরি করে শুরু করেছি ডিসেম্বর জানুয়ারি যে কোনো সময় তোমাদের পরীক্ষা হতে পারে তার আগে তো আমাকে ধরো একটা রিজনেবল অ্যামাউন্ট অফ সিলেবাসটা কভার করতে হবে তো সেটা মাথায় রেখে আমি ভেবেছি যে এই সপ্তাহটার পর থেকে আমি আমাদের যেটা এমপিসি থ্রি টু কোর্স সেটাতে চলে যাব আর যদি পরে কখনো সময় থাকে বা কিছু এক্সট্রা ক্লাসও নেওয়া যেতে পারে তোমাদের কোনো ডাউট থাকলে বা তোমাদের এই যেগুলো আলোচনা করছি বা যেগুলো তোমরা আগে সেমিস্টারে জানা উচিত এরকম কোন টপিক থাকলে আলাদা করে তোমরা আমাকে বলে দিও আমি আলাদা করে কিছু এক্সট্রা ক্লাস পরে নিয়ে নিতে পারি হ্যাঁ ডিপেন্ডিং অন সিচুয়েশন যে কতটা আমরা এই সেমিস্টারের কোর্সটা এগিয়ে যেতে পারছি তার উপর বেস করে ঠিক আছে আর যদি কোনো প্রশ্ন থাকে হ্যাঁ বলো যদি কোনো প্রশ্ন থাকে যদিও সময় নেই আজকে আর আমি আগের দিন পরের দিন থেকে ফিফটি মিনিটস বা ফিফটি ফাইভ মিনিটস শেষ করার চেষ্টা করবো যদি কোনো প্রশ্ন থাকে বলতে পারো ইলেকট্রোম্যাগনেটিক ফিল্ড রয়েছে সেই ইলেকট্রোম্যাগনেটিক ফিল্ড একটা ফোর্স এক্সার্ট করবে যদি তোমাদের কোন অসুবিধা হয় আমি তোমাদেরকে এটা কি তোমাদের আগে সেমিস্টার কভার করা হয়েছে ক্লাসে পড়ানো হয়েছে এটা কিন্তু তোমাদের আগের সেমিস্টারে এটা 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 মানে কভার করার কথা মানে আগের সেমিস্টার পড়ানো মানে সিলেবাসের মধ্যে আছে এবং এটা গোড়ার দিকে জিনিস কারণ ওয়ান্স ইউ কমপ্লিট ইলেকট্রো স্ট্যাটিস ম্যাগনেটো স্ট্যাটিস তারপরে যাই হোক কোনো কারণে হয়তো হয়নি মানে বিকজ অফ দিস ক্লাসের যেহেতু তোমরা ঠিক সময় সময় পাওয়া যায়নি সেটাও একটা কারণ হতে পারে তো এইটা টেনশন স্ট্রেস টেনশনটা জানা উচিত কারণ এনার্জি মোমেন্টাম টেনশন পড়তে গেলে তখন এটা জানতে হবে যখন তোমরা হয়তো জানি না অন্য কোনো কোর্সে পড়েছো কিনা সেকেন্ডটা কি পড়েছেন এনার্জি মোমেন্টাম টেনশন আমার বক্তব্যগুলো জানা উচিত মানে ইম্পর্টেন্ট জিনিস এটা জানা উচিত কারণ এনার্জি মোমেন্টাম হাই এনার্জি ফিজিক্স করো বা যে কোনো জিনিসই করো রিলেটিভিটি করো এনার্জি মোমেন্টাম টেনশন পরে আসবে সো এটা জানা উচিত তোমরা আমি যদি মনে হয় আমি পরে একটা ক্লাস আলাদা করে নিয়ে নিতে পারি এটা ঠিক আছে হ্যাঁ এখনই আমি নিচ্ছি না কারণ এগেন আমি তাহলে ফোকাসটা লুজ করে যাবো রাইট কারণ আমি যদি এখন এগুলো এক একটা ধরে ধরে পড়া থাকি তাহলে আর এই সেমিস্টারে কোর্স পড়ানো হবে না হ্যাঁ পিছিয়ে যাবো কারণ এটা অনেকটা রয়েছে তুমি তোমরা দেখলেই বুঝতে পারবে যে এই সেমিস্টারের কোর্সটা অনেক ভাস্ট সিলেবাসটা অনেকটা ভাস্ট আমরা জানি না প্লাজমা ফিস অবধি আদৌ পৌঁছাতে পারবো কিনা কারণ রেডিয়েশন পার্টটা হিউজ প্লাস রিলেটিভিস্টিক ইটো ডাইনামিক্সটা তো সিগনিফিকেন্ট অ্যামাউন্ট অফ আমাদের কভার করতে হবে তো যদি তোমাদের এটা না পড়ানো হয়ে থাকে আমি যেহেতু ডিরাইভ করিনি ভাষায় বললে বুঝতে পারবে না তোমরা যেটা বলবো গ্রিফিতের বইয়ে খুব সহজ করে দেওয়া আছে আচ্ছা আমি একটা জিনিস বলে দিই যে আমি যে দুটো তিনটে বই ফলো করি সেটা খুব স্ট্রেট ফরওয়ার্ড যেটা গ্রিফিতকে আমি তোমাদের আগের সেমিস্টারের কোর্সটা যেটা আমরা করেছি এমপিসি টু থ্রি এটাতে আমি বেশিরভাগটা গ্রিফিত ফলো করাতাম জ্যাকসন ফলো করাতাম কিছুটা পার্ট যেটা ওই বাউন্ডারি ভ্যালিউ ভ্যালিউ প্রবলেম ওইগুলোতে হ্যাঁ বেশিরভাগটাই গ্রিফিত ফলো করতাম গ্রিফিতে সহজ তুমি যদি গ্রিফিতেরও সমস্ত প্রবলেম করতে পারো ইউ ক্যান বি কোয়াইট কনফিডেন্ট যে আমি বেশি ভাবে জ্যাকসন ফলো করি পার্টিকুলারলি রেডিয়েশন পার্টগুলো 
আর রিলেটিভিস্টিক একটু ডাইনামিক্সের জন্য আমি যেটা করি সেটা হচ্ছে কি দুটো বই রয়েছে একটা হচ্ছে সূত্রের একটা ইন্ট্রোডাকশন টু জেনারেল রিলেটিভিটি রয়েছে তার ফার্স্ট দুটো চ্যাপ্টার স্পেশাল রিলেটিভিটির উপরে আর একটা বই রয়েছে বলো ওটা খুব ফেমাস বই পাতলা চটি বই এটা কি অথরটার নাম বিএসসি তোমরা হয়তো হয়তো ইউজ করে থাকতে পারো ইন্ট্রোডাকশন টু স্পেশাল রিলেটিভিটি কি যেন নামটা মনে আসছে না আমি পরের দিন বলে দেব তো রবার্ট রেসনিক হ্যাঁ রেসনিক রেসনিক হ্যাঁ খুব মানে আমার মনে হয় যে খুব ভালো বই পাতলা বই কিন্তু যথেষ্ট ইনফরমেটিভ মানে রিলেটিভিটি ভালো ভালোভাবে শিখতে গেলে আমি বলবো স্পেশাল রিলেটিভিটি ভালো শিখতে গেলে রেসনিকের বইটা খুব ভালো বই হ্যাঁ তো এটা এটা আমি মানে থ্রু আউট দ্য কোর্স এটা ইউজ করবো সুতরাং ওই দুটো কোর্স দেখবে দুটো দুটো বই হয়তো ইন্টারনেটে অ্যাভেলেবেল রয়েছে হ্যাঁ আর না থাকলে বলো আমি শেয়ার করে দেবো ওইগুলো ঠিক আছে তো আমি মোটামুটি খুব বেশি বই যায় না আর ক্লাসিক্যাল থিয়োরি অফ ফিল্ডস লান্ডাওয়ের রয়েছে বাট এগেন আমি যে এই কোর্সটা থ্রু আউট এসআই ইউজ করব এখন ম্যাক্সিম সিকুয়েশন অনেকে পুরনো বইগুলো তো সিজিএস ইউনিট থাকে ইভেন এখনও অনেকে সিজিএস ইউনিট প্রেফার করে বাট সেটা পার্সোনাল প্রেফারেন্স রাইট কেউ সিজিএস ইউনিট কেউ এসআই ইউনিট পছন্দ করে কিন্তু আমি বলে রাখি যে আমি থ্রু আউট দ্য কোর্স এসআই ইউনিটেই পড়াবো এখন লান্ডাওয়ের বইটা অনেক পুরনো বই কিন্তু খুবই ভালো অথেন্টিক বই পার্টিকুলারলি কনসেপচুয়াল জিনিসগুলো বোঝার জন্য খুবই ভালো বই কিন্তু সমস্যাটা এটাই যে আমি যেটা পড়াবো আর ওখানে যেটা আছে তোমাকে ওই বারবার কনভার্ট করতে হবে আর কি এসআই ইউনিট সিজিএস ইউনিট বাট এগেন যদি ফিজিক্সটা বুঝতে চাও তাহলে কনসাল্ট করতেই পারো হ্যাঁ ক্লাসিক্যাল থিওরি অফ ফিল্ডস লান্ডাও অ্যান্ড লিপসিজ এটা খুব ক্লাসিক বই একটা এবং এটা কনসাল্ট করতে পারো আমি কারণ আমি বলবো না এটা মানে থ্রু স্টেপ বাই স্টেপ ক্যালকুলেশনগুলো তুমি মেলাতে পারবে কারণ ওগুলো সিজিএস ইউনিটে রয়েছে তো মোটামুটি আমি খুব বেশি এই তিন দু তিনটে বইয়ের মধ্যেই আমি কনফাইন্ড থাকি সুতরাং প্রবলেম হওয়ার কথা নয় আর যদি কোনো এমনি কোনো তোমাদের কোনো ডাউট থাকে যে কোনো জায়গায় না বুঝতে পারো সেটা সেপারেটলি আলাদা করে আমরা যেহেতু অনলাইন হচ্ছে এখন বুঝতে পারছি ফেস টু ফেস ইন্টারাকশনের সুযোগ কমে সবাই আছো সবাই একসঙ্গে কথা বলতেও পারবে না ইন্টারনেটের স্পিডের ব্যাপারটা রয়েছে তো আমরা যেটা চেষ্টা করব যে যেগুলো বাকি রয়ে যাবে তোমরা আমাকে পরে মানে ধরো সেটা একটা কোনো টপিকে ধরো রিলেটিভিস্টিক ডাইনামিক্স আমি ধরো দশখানা লেকচার নিলাম তারপরে হয়তো একটা বা দুটো লেকচার আমি জাস্ট ডাউট ক্লারিফিকেশন জন্য রাখতে পারি যেখানে যা যা ডাউট থাকবে সেগুলো আমরা আলোচনা করব ঠিক আছে হ্যাঁ ঠিক আছে তাহলে হ্যাঁ আগে তাহলে এখানে থামি আজকে হ্যাঁ একটু দেরি হয়ে গেল ঠিক আছে পরের দিন থেকে আমি টাইমটা মেনটেন করার চেষ্টা করব ঠিক আছে সবাই হুম ঠিক আছে তাহলে আলোচনা <laughs> আলাদা করে পড়াবো ঠিক আছে পড়াবো সুতরাং ওটা এখনই তোমাদের মাথায় ঘামাতে হবে না হ্যাঁ তোমরা আপাতত যদি পারো স্টেশন সেটা বুঝে নিও নিজে নিজে পরে আমি আবার সময় থাকলে দেখবো ঠিক আছে ঠিক আছে ওকে তাহলে ঠিক আছে ঠিক আছে সিও ঠিক আছে ওকে বাই থ্যাংক ইউ থ্যাংক ইউ